You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hello and welcome to the TSPN How To Show. We are on TSPN once a month, and that would be every Wednesday, third Wednesday of each month from 6 until 7 p.m. And we'd like to thank you so much for joining us this evening. We'd also like you to, inv uh, we'd like to invite you to contact us and let us know if you see something that you're particularly interested in that you would like to have us show and demonstrate how to. We would love to do that for you. Please contact tspntv.com. And if you have any questions regarding any of the items that we do, any of the procedures that we do to Today, please contact Sue at TSPN TV and then she can get the information to you. I would like to tell you a little bit about our show this evening. It is a craft show. We will be uh, doing different types. We'll be doing some home, uh, some home crafts and then we'll be doing some jewelry crafts. I will be doing um, how to use foam core board for exhibiting your jewelry and also for making window cornices, uh, cornice style window coverings. So that's what I will be doing in the third and fourth segments. And I would like to introduce you now to Franny and she will tell you what she will be uh, showing you right after this. Uh, thanks Angie. Uh, today I'm going to be showing yard art. Uh, how to assemble yard art from items found at the thrift store. And Barbara, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to show you how to make the lightest weight Almost least expensive necklace you've ever seen. Almost least. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait. Yeah. Okay. They're a lot of fun. Good. Right. Okay, so I'm up first. Yard art. Well, what the heck is that, right? So when Angie and I talked about this segment, she bought me this for inspiration. <laughs> it came in two pieces. She bought it at a thrift store for, I think, about $10. It's a dowel. You stick this in the ground. Clunk. There's my ground. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. You're my rock. I'm the rock. <laughs> and this piece, it was assembled by taking, it looks like, a glass lampshade, a saucer, and maybe a cruet or a bud vase. The idea of it is that this part goes over the dowel, which you put in the ground, and I think it looks like a flower. And yard art doesn't have to do anything. There doesn't have to be a function. Yes, you could put bird seed on the top, I suppose, but it really is just to look pretty and to be interesting in your yard. And the deer won't eat it. And the deer yeah. won't eat it, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm going to flip this down just for now, ladies. In uh, thinking about my yard art, my piece, I thought uh, that I would go to the thrift store to find everything. Angie gave me this uh, to get me started this piece right here which is of course where the dowel is going to go. Barbara is going to hold this up for me. So I've done some pre-gluing as you can see this has been glued to the bottom of this plate and Barbara is going to be my dowel so to speak and she's right. going to hold it this way. Tell We're us about the glue. Okay so the glue, haha, -ha. the E6000, this is a really a crafter's dream come true. You can get it for about five dollars at most places, uh, Lowe's department store, most of your hardware stores are going to have E6000. I think you can get it at Walmart for about five dollars. You can also get it online uh, for a lot cheaper. If you have Amazon Prime, that's probably a good option. This really should set for 24 hours to be perfectly sure that the construction is really strong, but it's also very fast acting. So when you use it, uh, you may want to wear rubber gloves. I'm not going to do that today. I don't think I'll wear the gloves. Now, when I went to the thrift store, I am the leader of the Saucy Sisters cooking group, and I was immediately drawn to this piece of cake. Isn't this adorable? This, Very I think, cute. was a salt and pepper shaker. It has little holes on the top, and it used to have some kind of a connection at the bottom, and so I knew that whatever my yard art was, it was going to have to end with this piece of cake up on the top. So, as I was looking through the thrift store, uh, a lady there who was helping me named Judy, uh, made me so happy because on Mondays, if you're over 55, everything is half off. You're not over 55. Yes. No, I am. <laughs> I will admit it. I am over 55, and so I just had an absolute ball. And so thank you, Judy, for making me so happy that day. So 
Obviously, I've done some pre-gluing because uh, glue drying on TV probably isn't the best form of programming. So I also found these little dishes. Everything here on this table I found at the thrift store. So once I saw the cake and I saw the teapot, the theme popped into my head of Mad Hatter's happy unbirthday tea party. So we're going to start by just putting a little bit of the E6000 on the bottom of this plate. Now to get all of these dishes really clean and ready to be glued, I used this product called Goo Gone. And it's just fantastic uh, for getting off those sticky priced stickers. Oh, they never ever come off and they just leave a gooey mess. Well, this really works well. It also takes off old bumper stickers really nicely. It's called Goo Gone. It's in a spray and you can just wipe it off with a little wet towel and it comes perfectly clean. So I'm going to do this kind of a little askew because it's this mad tea party theme. So I'm just going to press it like that. I'm going to leave that there just for a minute. And while that's setting just for a second, I want to talk to you about the other project that I made. Angie, would you hold that up? This was an inspiration, a true inspiration from Judy who works at the thrift store. She told me about the yard art that she makes at her beach home by collecting, uh, by collecting driftwood. And she screws hers together. So, and she makes flowers and people actually stop by her house and ask her if they're for sale. And she has her yard filled with these beautiful drift uh, wood flowers. So I decided I wanted to do a flower too. So when I saw this pink dish at the thrift store, I just knew that was my flower. And all of these pieces here I got at the thrift store. The only thing that I got at Lowe's was this actual wooden trellis. And then I painted this center uh, wood right here with just some spray paint, painted it green to give you the illusion of a stem. Sorry, Barbara. That's okay. And these dish these leaf-shaped dishes I got right at the thrift store. And this centerpiece was at the thrift store. And look at this. Doesn't that look just like the center of a flower? I just love it. My husband is a uh, wildflower photographer. That looks like a flower. And that looks like the center of a wildflower. And the nice thing about this, you can stick it into a pot. You can stick it right into the ground. And then, of course, the little butterfly dish was just the perfect ending to that. And I used E6000 on all of it. Uh, it, it uh, attaches glass to glass, glass to wood, wood to leather, metal. You, you, yeah, metal, anything. So this is really great stuff. So this probably is not set enough. If I was doing this at home slowly, I would make sure that each piece was completely set before adding. But we don't have that kind of time today, so we're going to get going. So once again, you can see I did some pre-gluing. I found these little dishes because in my head, I was thinking of this task kind of teetering, towering stack of uh, tea party themed. Fine. It is reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland kind of tea party stuff. This is such a cute little whimsical teapot with the little flowers mm -hmm. on it, the little chicky birds. I was amazed at how quickly everything came together at the thrift store. And, you know, I just went to the Great Finds thrift store, which is down on Sutter Hill. And people, it's amazing how many people don't know where Sutter Hill is. It's by the taco truck. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to hold this because it may not like it over there. It'll this love is, it. This is just adding to the theme of kind of a little off, off center. A little bit off center like, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping this won't break on TV. Here we go. Ah! This is very exciting. I also found this little spoon, which I think is cute. And I'm not sure. I think that I would just have it maybe sitting out. What do you think, Angie? Up like this or just sitting on I the plate? I think just down maybe and just, just like that. And plate. not glue it, maybe. Maybe not even glue it this time. Uh, we'll see. Uh -huh. Then my last, oh my gosh, my cake. The beginning of the whole thing. <laughs> the piece of cake. This is what inspired the entire episode. So I had never done yard art before and I was just amazed at how incredibly easy it was and really how much fun. Like I said when I was talking to Judy at the thrift store, we had the whole shop excited about my project and people were pulling out all kinds of things and giving me great ideas. I didn't have, you know, the budget to try to do everything, uh, but I, I wanted to do two. So it was, it's really been fun to do and that's it. I just put a little bit of glue there. I'm just going to put the cap on so that it doesn't kind of run everywhere. And then when you're working, always have a little damp paper towel with you so that you can wipe up little messes. You can see we have it on some plastic today. It is. It can be a bit of a, a messy project. So what do you think, artist Angie? 
Maybe Help me put that final piece on. And maybe I'm going to hold this right sort here. of like off center. I love it. I love that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just, just, sorry. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> So if you have questions about yard art, and uh, if you have ideas about um, your, of your own, or pictures of your own, you can always contact Sue at tspntv.com. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, have you, I'm sorry to say um. When I say um, what are you supposed to do? Um. um. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Angie, what do you think? Would you put this in your yard? Absolutely. And really, one of the main reasons is, you know, I was joking about the fact that, that the deer wouldn't eat it, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, truly, we have a horrible deer problem mm -hmm. in Pioneer, California. Barbara, what about, what about you? Would you put yard art in your yard? Oh, or yeah. Would you think we, have that a, we have a couple of trees that we whacked off, and we didn't take the whole stump out mm -hmm. because I want to put some kind of yard art mm -hmm. on it. Um, I'm not sure Jim would go along with this one, though. <laughs> this Jim, are you out there watching? Say <laughs> yes or no. Call us right away. <laughs> well, that was my yard art, and I think that I had a lot of fun doing it, Angie, so I wanted oh, to thank good. you for inspiring me. It all good. started this with this so little cute. blue vase right here. It is so very cute. So once again, if you want to see, uh, more, if you have pictures that you'd like to share, or if you have any comments, please contact Sue at tspn.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Oh, no! There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't sure if it was going to stick, and it didn't. <laughs> Can you cut it before that? <laughs> there. Good as new. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. <laughs>
Um, purple, gold, orange, blue. The, the more colors your yarn has in it, the more character your necklace will have. But how do you actually make this thing? Um, you start out with your yarn. Find the end of your yarn. And the way it sort of starts out is you measure 13 inches from the end of your yarn and you make a little loop and you pick a crochet hook. I'm going to take the pink one, not for any real reason. You want to go work along with us? I'd love me. to. Okay. I'm going to try. <laughs> All right. Okay, 13 inches. Mm, yeah, 13 inches. So that's 13 is your end is here. Put this end down here, 13 inches. There. And then, uh, and there's, it's loop. not an exact science. Okay. Make a loop and mm -hmm. stick your crochet hook on there. Can you Lucky crochet? Lucky 13. Uh, no. No? I've done it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm really teaching somebody. So right. you put the loop on the hook. Then, um, with your left hand, put the yarn over your index finger. Over your, there you go. And bring your thumb, how do I hold my thumb? I don't know. Oh, I use my thumb to hold the yarn down here. Watch me do this a couple okay. of times. <laughs> and you like wrap, sticks. <laughs> wrap the hook around the yarn and pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. I did it. And then <laughs> wrap the yarn around your hook again. There you go. And pull that new loop through the loop that's on your hook. Ooh. You're getting it. Okay, I'm it. <laughs> I did there it. There you go. I did and it. And keep doing that. Yay. Wrap and the yarn around it. the hook okay. and pull it through the loop. So you can really do a lot of thinking when you crochet. Is it? Do you find it relaxing to crochet? Yes. And you how just keep you, going. How do you come up with like uh, the 13 inches? Where That's you just what somebody told me. Kind of to start. Length. Yep. Um, but I have done them where I make them a lot shorter than 13 this inches one is. or a lot longer. That one is shorter. That one probably started out being about mm, 8 or 9 inches. Mm. Um, so you just keep, this is called shing, single crochet, and you just keep doing a single crochet until, come on, stay on there, until you get your single crochet to be approximately 13 inches long. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter. So is there some kind of thing where, say you wanted to give this as a gift and the person, ha you know, wanted to wear it shorter? Is mm -hmm. there some kind of, you could like yes. slide it down and yes. create, oh, are there? Right. Yep. Um, oh. does, does One of them has it? Uh, Yes, one of the necklaces, and careful of your mic there. Yes, you have one. May I, I, have, may I have that off? Angie's necklace has, <laughs> oh, been all tied up in her earring. <laughs> At the back end of Angie's necklace, which would be up on the back, there's a bead on here. And if you want to make the necklace shorter, That's you just cool. pull the bead down, and it pulls the necklace up on your Very the front brilliant. Of your neck. Okay. Barbara, who taught you how to crochet? Was this a generational gift from um, your mother? I don't remember who taught me how to crochet. I just know I've done it all my life. Wow. But I don't remember who told me. Home ec class? Or who me. Or um, hard to say. I don't know. Now, I so, know that you and your neighbor Jackie do mm -hmm. a lot of things together. And you quilt and you... Did you... Did you we have made... Um, Jackie and myself and a lot of our friends who belong to um, a quilting group in the community called the <laughs> Thimblebees. We've made dozens and dozens and dozens of these necklaces and we sell them. <laughs> we sell them at the Camp Out for Cancer every, every spring. I mean every fall. Now I made, I stopped here, I've, it's like 16 inches long but this is the part that is going to be and you can make hang it down. shorter. I can make it shorter. So now I've, I've cro single crocheted it as long as I want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cut this off at 13 inches. And I'm going to pull this tail through the loop. 
so that this is the first strand of my Are necklace. Are you supposed to be getting these down here? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm ignoring you, but I'm trying to do the demonstration <laughs> for the yeah, audience. You have to stay on the crochet hook because there's nothing coming down. Uh, it's coming oh, up. we'll figure out. <laughs> so I'm, I'm making a second no, no, no. strand because you need three strands to make a necklace. So I'm oh. leaving poor Franny in the lurch <laughs> while I'm still doing this for I'm the audience. I'm making a crochet hook cozy. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's always nice to have around, really. <laughs> but you can see this is not a long process. Uh, I have less than two minutes to go. So, um, I'm going to try and How hurry through this. How many of these have you given away to friends, do you think? Oh, 15, 20, I don't know. And novel, the, the kind of yarn that works well for this is what I would call novelty yarn. Something that has some kind of interesting texture to it mm -hmm. and lots of color. Mm -hmm. so I've seen yarn that has stray strands like hair. that pop out. Yeah. That, would be, that would be very pretty. That, but the one you have on too. is just beautiful. Now, especially I'm not, with I'm not what really you finishing on. this because I'm kind of running out of time. Oh, you are? Yeah. Isn't, isn't my break in? Oh, no, I guess I'm three not. Minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. I got a lot of time. Three okay. minutes is a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So now I'm going to make a third one. <clears throat> Starting it with a little loop. So to select your colors, do you do you kind of shop around and find out like how how could you have matched this any more perfectly with what we're wearing? I mean, pure just dumb luck. Mm, okay, <laughs> none of that talent that I, I thought. No, that. no, this was pure coincidence, Angie. Actually, um, the railroad tie yarn necklaces were hanging in Jackie's closet, and I borrowed them for this demonstration. Oh, and um, this kind of chunky yarn, and like the one that Franny's making and are wearing, and then this other one are necklaces that I made uh, months ago, and then. This yarn that I'm working with now and the yarn that Franny's working with, I just bought at the Whole Affair Yarn and Bead Shop in I love Jackson that. I love that yesterday, store. or yeah. day before yesterday. It's, it's a store. really nice store. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And I have recently taken up knitting, and I'm learning how to make socks. I'm halfway through my fourth ever pair of socks. I'm having so much fun with it. So are we going to have a cold winter? Is that it? <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? I don't know. I just is telling you? <laughs> no, no. I just, I just have found I really like to knit, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. You know what I like about your necklace? I've been wearing it now for several minutes, and I, I you don't even, even know you have it, it on. on. I know they're wonderful. You ever get some where it's hot and yep. So we're going to pretend yeah. that these are all One the minute. same length, and mm -hmm. they're not. So. You take your three st strands that you've crocheted, you pull all of their little crochet ends together, tie them in a knot, and you take the other three ends, pull the three ends together. This isn't going to come out very good because I'm Russian, but you get the point. Then you tie all these three together in the back. Voila! That was and very voila. quick. You have a necklace. Very quick. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back and we will talk about uh, Fumgar. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hi, I'm Angie and I'm going to show you how to make a cornice style window covering for any room in your house. I would like to show you what I have in my house, which is what kind of inspired me to do this. Um, this is one of three pieces that I have in my living room. I chose this because my walls are white and the three windows that I have are such beautiful view windows that I didn't really want to take away from the view by having colors or patterns there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this, this is a moiré fabric. It looks like water and it's supposed to, to imitate m the moiré eel swimming through the water or whatever. Anyway, it's French. <laughs> and so, you know, you can see that I, I didn't want to have it be very, very plain, so I added these little reflective mirror birds. And so in my house I have three of these 
this is a one end. This is the end to your left. Um, and it has a little delineator. The, uh, the one in the center is much longer and it has a lot more birds on it. And the birds get, get smaller. So I, got, I bought two packages of birds, one big birds, one little birds. And so it looks like they're kind of flying away. And I even have some of the birds attached to my wall space. It looks like they're about ready to fly out the window. And it looks but anyway, really great. Thanks. <laughs> um, so it doesn't take away from the scene. Anyway, uh, so I am going to be showing you how I made these. I made them with foam core, and foam core is a piece of foam which has, so it has a center of foam, it has a side of paper, and another side of paper. The standard size for these foam core boards are 20 by 30. So you can have a bigger window than 20 by 30. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so if you do, then your measurement would be an addition, oops, an addition that you would simply tape together, tape together um, with packing tape. Oh, is that all? Mm -hmm. Because when we are finished, you will see that the batting that we're going to put on and the fabric that we're going to put on holds it taut. So it doesn't matter how many pieces you have taped together. You can have a, a um, cornice board that is 60 feet long. Because when you said you tape them together, I was mm -hmm. thinking, well, they're going to flop all over the place. No, because the oh. fabric holds them in place. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to do today is a, a window so I am saying that the, the window is, the actual window size is 26 inches wide. That's one of our small windows downstairs. Okay, so all you really have to measure is what is the full width of the window itself? And then to that, you will add two inches on either side. Just as any window covering, you would add two inches on either side so that you have enough to keep the light out and cover the window completely. So the piece of foam core board would be 26 inches plus two inches on either side. So that makes it 30 inches wide, which Voila, happens to be exactly <laughs> the size of the foam core board. Awesome. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> what a coincidence. I love it when it comes together. <laughs> and the standard, um, the standard length of a cornice on, on any size window is the least that you can make it is 14 inches. Oh, really? Just to balance the window well. You don't want a little, little teeny cornice, and you don't want a gigantic cornice. Uh, and also, if you get any, any, any uh, uh, longer than 14 inches, you have a kind of a difficult time actually getting your hand up in, inside of it to attach it to the wall. You know, oh. so you so <laughs> that's a rather practical <laughs> you know? reason to keep yes, it short. Yes, yes. So, um, so I have done this kind of little uh, diagram on of how many pieces that you actually need to make this cornice. So one is you need a piece that is 30 inches wide by 14 inches long, and that's the standard size of a cornice. And then you're going to need a piece that will be the top. Me to hold that. The top of the cornice. So uh, you will need a piece, this is one piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces. So four pieces of foam core is what you're going to need. Wow, that's not very much. And so you will cut them like so. I had this drawn out, but you really can't see it very well in there. So I'll just show you with the pieces that I actually cut. So, okay, so this is the front of the cornice that you're going to put up. This is the top of the cornice that you're going to put up. It's the four inches deep that go back to the wall space. And then this is a side, 
and this is the side. So we're actually going to just tape these with packing tape. Brilliant. And then what we will do afterward is hot glue them together on the inside. Oh. So we're just going to put these on here and put it on the top. We're going to set it right on the top here and, and tape it down on the front. Okay. You know, we are going to put batting on here. So if you have wrinkles and stuff in the tape, not a big Who deal. Yep. Sounds good to me. Then we're going to take the sides and we're going to push them up underneath. Now I will tell you that the sides themselves are slightly shorter to accommodate the difference in, um, well, you know what? In the width of the actual board, Well, actually, right? it's where, I was going to say it's where you put, it's where you put the top board and we didn't put the top board right. Oh, because my side fits perfectly. It does? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Where am I wrong? No, it fits perfectly. Really? Oh, okay. Does it fit I, for you? My mistake was I thought I made a mistake. Ah. Oh, well, wow. that's your usual mistake. <laughs> Auntie, we know you're never wrong. <laughs> so, so, anyway, you're tape it once again. On the front, on here, yes, and on yes. the top both. I, mean, I love the fact that you're just taping this. I am going to tape it. Yep. Instead of using, you know, glue. <laughs> you know, you know, glue. You know, <laughs> I love glue. You know how unforgiving <laughs> glue can be sometimes. Um, but, but yes, we will go ahead and put hot glue in all the seams of this, you know. But we have no outlet. So. We are That's not going to be doing that ripping, today. Everyone. <laughs> tape ripping. That's all that is. Okay. So, boom, 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 boom. So, uh, once again, we do not worry about if it's bumpy on the front or anything like that. Okay? Got it. So, now we have a cornice almost ready to rock and roll here. The next thing that you will want to do is maybe we should put, put some on the sides. A little bit. A bit on the sides. Okay. It doesn't matter where you put it. Oh, I love that. Aspect See, it's too. just yeah. like so easy. Who would think it would be so easy, huh? So far, I think the hardest part is just cutting a straight line. How did you make it straight? Oh, I'm like glad that? you asked. Okay. Um, well, of course I measured it, but then I also used a a uh, gosh, well, a ruler. A, it's, but it's a metal ruler. Oh, it's sitting right on the top there. Through the magic of television. <laughs> yes. You have a ruler, my dear. So <laughs> to cut these. Um, Barbara's going to show you the tools that you can use to cut foam core. And uh, really, what you will want to do with foam core is you will want to make a, a tentative kind of cut. Um, you will want to take your ruler and put it on your line that you have already measured out. And then you will want to take a really light cut. Um, so that you, you're not cutting through the whole thing at the fir on the first shot. And I always use a piece of old cardboard underneath it. Mm -hmm. So I don't cut my dining room table, which is always nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love my dining room table, so right. I don't want to cut my dining room table. Mm. So first you cut, you just make a really light cut and keep your blade really tight up next to this metal ruler. And then go one more time and you're through it. And if you're not through it, then you are through it. Awesome. So, wow. nothing to it. Just to do it. And we don't have to worry about these little edges that Fuzzy. aren't perfect because they're all going to get covered with batting and fabric. That's right. Wow, that's right. That's nice. right. And, and if you put this up against, you know, if this is like, if this is up against something else, like this is sitting on the top of it here, it's going to make it all flat anyway. You know, so you try to keep your, your clean, cleanest cuts where, uh, on the edges so that, so that they are not, like, fuzzy out here, you know. Uh, so, anyway, the second step, then, is to go ahead and do your batting. Now, I know that Barbara can tell me a little bit about this batting <laughs> because I know nothing about batting. But, <laughs> anyway... Here, Tell us all about it. Here we have it's polyester. <laughs> it's all polyester I know, it's polyester. And it's like not very thick. 
No, it's not very thick. And so, like, is there is this a batting that you would use for quilting? Or some people would. I wouldn't. I don't care for polyester, but it's good for um, quilts, like for baby quilts, because they're going to get washed and dried and washed and dried and washed and dried. And polyester is like iron. Yeah. So. If you want something that's really going to hold up and you don't care how many times it gets washed and dried, polyester is great. Okay. And it's nice and thin, and it just gives enough body to it that, uh, that it's not like, it doesn't look like a board. I will tell you that this is going to take a little bit longer than the 12-minute segment that we are given. So I am going to continue this. Uh, after the break, uh, then I will show you how to put the fabric on and how to glue this on, and then I will also show you how to make a jewelry holder out of the foam core as well. So, we will be back in just a few moments, and we will show you the rest of how to finish this off. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Okay, so now I am finishing cutting the batting for the sides here. And once again, since we are, uh, you know, on TV and I don't have an outlet handy, we are going to tape it. Yay. So, yeah. So but at home, you would hot glue it. But at right? home, I, okay. mm -hmm. do you want to go ahead and tape that on sure. while I'm cutting the rest of this off of here? I can do it. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> That's the sound of tape. Yeah, once again. <laughs> And uh, if you cut if you cut these pieces a little too off or small or whatever, it doesn't really matter because batting sort of stretches about, and so it doesn't it it holds well. And so it's going to be covered up by fabric anyway. It's going to be covered up by fabric. Anyway. Yeah. Do you want one long piece or two short pieces for your end? Would you like another piece? There. Here you go. Angie, oh, one okay. one long. Sure. Or? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. And okay, then the next thing that we will do is uh, take our fabric. Please, please, please always iron your fabric before you begin because if you do not, it is a, an ugly mess. So, and also you might think about ironing under some pieces because again, we're going to hot glue this on. So I kind of measured it just roughly. Uh, of course, mine isn't coming directly from the ironing board, so I do have some folds in it from travel. But anyway, so you're, you're going to have either a selvage edge or you're going to iron under. You're going to iron under the fabric so that when you hot glue it, and, I, and you'll have to be sure that if you get a pattern that has some kind of line in it, you have to be sure that it is following the bottom line of your cornice board. So you will be hot gluing this to So you know you're the showing the bottom them the, of the it. inside. <laughs> I am it's showing the you the inside. Ah. Yeah. And so you want to go up a little a little ways into it. Um, on the so as you can see we have turned under, oh, maybe about an inch and a half or so. As I was mentioning earlier, if you, if you think that you can really see up inside this cornice from, from wherever you're standing in the room, then you may want to continue it up higher. It's, it's entirely up to you. And the Enfrenti was, was asking me, okay, so you get all this done and you so get all this covered. stuff glued. Yeah. So How do you get it up on the wall? Up on the wall. And what you do is... You go ahead and get a level out, and you put a couple of pencil dots up that will take you at least, you know, I, I guess I would probably put mine, you know, just like you would hang a picture pretty much. Mm, I don't know. Put, okay. like, put like one here and, you know, one here. So you measure out from the center, you know, you, in the center of the space. You have a question? And we don't have to worry about um, weight because this thing is so lightweight. No. So it it's not like, like when you're hanging a big heavy curtain that you have to support it three or four times across the distance. Right. It's just so lightweight. So what you do is you take the L bracket and you screw it into the wall. So you it's just an ordinary old L bracket. Screw them into the wall and you always get an L bracket that covers at least half of the distance of the top of your cornice. Mm -hmm. You want a nice support no there. Yeah. And so you just you screw it to the wall, and then you just lay your cornice right on top of it, 
and then you go up underneath it with a really short little screw and you screw up into the into the cornice mm -hmm. with you know a, just a short screw so the screw hang. doesn't come up out through the top it just nests up in the mm -hmm. batting that's in yeah. it yeah it's you don't need much to right. hold it in how, sure. how deep do you make this this is about 4 inches and and like i say it's it's deep enough so that you can get your arm up in it mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. attach it to the wall space and um and yet and yet it's not too it's not too big okay. you know for this space so you wouldn't want to make it six or eight inches sticking out that's too big not really okay yeah yeah uh-huh and so once again i will show you the finished product and and you can put tassels down here you can put cording across here you can just have leave it like if you want to put a floral design you know then you'd have to match your your floral pattern across if you're doing like a 60 inch span or something like that and then Barbara has this again for us to, sh to show and here is the back of it it doesn't have to be real fancy the corners of it where you put the where you uh, put the fabric inside can just be delicately folded or bunched up uh, you can see I didn't finish my little line here because I guess I just ran out of gold well, it's no, a wire. <laughs> nobody but can see yeah, it. Nobody can see it. Only, only the the um, all of all of the oh, I don't know, flies and all kinds <laughs> of bugs that eventually end up on top of it. I guess the, those are the only things that would really care about it. So anyway, that is how to make a cornice. Again, if you have any questions, please contact us, tspntv.com. Uh, also, if you have any ideas for other window coverings that we would like to see where you use foam core, that would be excellent. Now we'd like to show you what you can do with foam core besides this. And that is something that I had made and given to Barbara some time ago. And it is a picture frame that has foam core in it. And it is just regular white foam core. And Franny, could you grab me those two pieces over there on the yes, top? The, yeah, those two pieces and the and the box. The box. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that you can make jewelry holders from anything. You can make oh them gosh. from uh, from picture frames. And this is, this is just a little picture frame that had some old photos of family blah, blah, blah in it. And so I just <laughs> took, <laughs> took them out and threw them in a drawer. <laughs> and, um, and then I decided to do something for myself. <laughs> So I covered it. Yeah, I covered it with this with this fabric. Once again, I I um, went ahead and ironed it first, and then ah, the spray glue. Uh, I if you use spray glue on a fabric, then you can then you can kind of press it into the foam core, and it and it's really nice and tight. Then you it know, doesn't it, it won't droop well. or anything. It won't droop or right. anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then I covered this mirror up. You know, I, I put a mirror on it so that you can actually hang jewelry on it. Um, I'm going to borrow one of your pins sure. here that doesn't have anything on it. Oh, even if it does, just let it fall down. Um, anyway, so right through this foam core with fabric, then you would hang, you would hang your uh, your daily jewelry that you that you always wear, and it, and it just hangs from here. And then you can um, check yourself out in this little mirror. <laughs> That <laughs> and, then I, and then I put just a, this little kind of shape on it, just to kind of give it a, a little, little decoration, jazzy, jazzy it up a little. And bit. is this um, ribbon that you put along here? This is uh, it's it's um, a trim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A trim. And then and then this is just like I don't know, I don't even know what this is. You know, it looks, it looks like Mardi Gras beads. It's Mardi Gras beads mm -hmm. could be. And then these were earrings. I cut off the back of those. And then I always like to kind of do the the back nicely too i don't know why but That's, i it do just you're an seems artist too it's nice and neat and then and then here's all the pins and you can also use um upholstery nails i use upholstery nails in this as well so you have so you have this hanging on your wall and you have your daily jewelry that you wear cuz i mean everybody has jewelry that they wear kind of like pretty much the same stuff unless they go out for special 
Okay. I'm going to cover my foam board foam with, with fabric? some fabric. Mm -hmm. I like the look yeah. of that. And then you can put a little mirror on it. Um, and then you can um, give these as gifts. Uh, people really love these gifts because it's kind of a, it's kind of an unusual thing to have a jewelry hanger. But I have this giant size one it, behind my my door in my bathroom. It's just under this little wall, and it has. All my black jewelry here, all my red jewelry here. I mean, this is a huge frame. It's big. Frame. I've seen it. It's, a it's huge big. Frame. <laughs> um, and we, since we are zooming right along, I am going to show you what we decided to do with Tasha's challenge. Oh. We have to talk about Tasha's challenge. So here's that. Here's that. Okay. So Tasha last month gave Frania and I a challenge, and she brought us, gave us some um, home goods. Some home goods things. <laughs> now this is a melon uh, cedar. This is the little round shape here. And then Franny, Franny used one, and this this can be either a skewer to skewer for barbecue vegetables or little pieces of meat or whatever. And so I decided to attach mine together and use it as a business card holder. And this is also foam core down here. So you can use foam core in just myriad ways. Angie, yours is priceless, just adorable. I used, I didn't even really work on mine. I stuck a seed packet in here. <laughs> you can stick it in the ground, and when your seeds your come up, marker. you know what your, that's right, it's your row marker. Great, I love it. I mean, just because it's it's a easier presentation doesn't mean it has less value. I mean, right. I, right. if I had a garden, I would have that in my garden. Awesome traits. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our next, cha next month's challenge for all of our viewers is this. How are we going to use this insulating tape? This is for hmm. um, pipes in the wintertime to prevent them from freezing. Hmm. And so it's self-adhesive on one side, and then also it's this beautiful, um, shiny kind of silver stuff on the other side. So we need to find out, and if you have any ideas, Send them to tfpntv.com. Uh, mm. Space it. <laughs> bicycle. You know, you mentioned bicycle. You can put you can put it all over your bike. Anyway. June Jetsons. Bye now and thank Bye, you for everybody. watching us tonight. <laughs> Bye.